five major components that make up the air conditioning system. I'm going to speak to you about the heart of the air conditioning system, the compressor. The compressor has one job. Its job is to pump, pump oil and refrigerant through the system. I want to start by going over a few things. We get some calls at Nostalgic Air Parts. People call us and say, my compressor is locking up. A compressor can't lock up. Either it locks up or it doesn't. There's no in between. It's like an engine. It has pistons, rings, etc. You're going to see in a moment. What causes this to act like it's locking up are three things. Your belt's loose, and normally if that happens, it'll squeal. Just tighten the belt. Your condenser isn't condensing. You have a high head pressure. Too much pressure is building inside the compressor and it can't turn. The third thing, it can have too much oil or refrigerant in the system. If you have any one of these three symptoms, you need to diagnose it properly to fix the problem. But the compressor is not locking up and the compressor is not the problem. Compressors do one thing. They pump and after a couple hundred thousand miles, they might wear out. But other than that, they usually don't fail. I'm going to explain a few things today. But first, I just want to I want to let you know that we're going to violate a compressor. And the compressor is actually a little bit embarrassed right now for what you're about to see. So please look cautiously. I don't want it to get scared and leave us. To begin, we're going to start with the front of the compressor. This is the front of the compressor, the nose. Not your nose, the nose of the compressor. Inside here is your front seal and your shaft where it rides. There's needle bearings right here that spin. The way this works is, in front of your front seal you have felt. This felt has two jobs. To protect the front seal from dirt and dust is the first job. The second job is to hold oil into it in case a leak develops. A lot of you guys have seen oil spray on the hood of your car. That's because that felt saturated with oil and the oil seeped by. The front seal of a compressor looks similar to this. Now the older compressors did have a different seal, but for the most part this is what they look like. There's an O-ring that goes on the outside edge, which sits on the inside, outside of the uh, nose here, inside, outside of the nose. The inside is Teflon, and it's a cone. The cone rides on your shaft. The shaft is here. The cone rides on it, and it forces, the, the Teflon's forced against it, keeping the oil inside the car. If you don't let this seal get lubricated, and the way you lubricate it is starting your car, turning the engine on, turning the AC on, turning the AC on, very important. If you don't lubricate it, that cone stays open. And at that point, oil and refrigerant can just flow. When it flows, then you have a leak. When you're up north or out west, and it's 10 degrees, January, you're shoveling snow, and you don't feel like starting your street rod, it's gonna save you money and a headache in the summer when it's 90 degrees and your AC is not working. Throw on your jacket, go in your car, start it up for 10 minutes, and run your AC. It's very important you do this at least once a month to keep the seal from, from drying out. Once it dries out, your compressor's shot, you gotta replace everything, and who wants to be under the hood of a car in 90 degree weather? Moving forward, right here, there's a bearing. It's a needle bearing like this, with a flat race. Those bearings, bearings, allow this wobble plate, which is this part, to turn. When that wobble plate turns, it's on an angle, as you can see. That pushes your pistons in and out of your cylinder. On the other side of the wobble plate is another bearing, brace, needle bearing, bearing for your pistons. And I'll show you that in one second, but I want to explain this tube. On this, you don't have a tube. On this one, you do. 709, no tube. 508, tube. What that tube does, it goes to the rear head of the compressor, and it pumps oil to the front seal. There's a hole right here. That hole goes down through the body of this nose and comes out in this front seal. And it's inside here, you can't see it, but there's a hole in there. That's what lubricates that front seal we just spoke about. Once you have your wobble plate like this, your pistons sit on it, and like I said, they turn. When they're turning, they're going up and down inside. Speaking of pistons, this is the back side where that race sits. This is your piston, and this is on a 709, there's seven of them, 508 has five. These are your rods, and this is your, I'm going to call it a hip and socket. This hip is cast aluminum, and these rods are steel. It won't take much for me to force this out and break this compressor. On these, we have two Teflon pistons. 
On a 508, it's a larger piston, but we have a metal ring. Did I say Teflon pistons? Teflon rings. You have a metal ring, like in an engine on a car. On this in the center, you have a worm gear with a ball, and that ball pops out. It's just a big stainless steel ball. What that does is it holds this part. The ball sits in there. It has a hole in the center for lubrication also. And it rides on this worm gear. And the way it works is when the pistons are turning, this goes on the worm gear and holds it in center. What I mean by that is this is the body of your compressor. This sets inside of it, and there's a key way to lock it all in place. It's fighting me, but I won. What happens is you don't want your pistons to knock around in there. And that worm gear will actually hold it all in place so it doesn't. So that's the whole point of the ball and the, and the worm gear and everything else. On the back side, we have an Allen head. This is to adjust the depth of the, of the pistons. And there's also a spring. It doesn't bounce very well. That's what gives you your tension. Let me show you how it all works. I don't know if you'll be able to see it very well, but if I turn this compressor, those pistons are spinning, and when they spin, they're going on that wobble plate I showed you. Right now, if you look right here, there's a little divot above each cylinder. That's where your suction valves go down and out. If I adjust that ball, or, or this Allen head, if I adjust it more, the pistons sink. If I let, let tension off, they rise. If you let too much off, you're going to damage your pistons on the valve. Just like having 15 to 1 compression in a huge cam. It ain't going to work. You're going to blow something up. Behind the back side of the compressor, wherever it went, is your valve plate. This is your valve plate. Suction side, discharge side. On the suction side, as I showed you, it has little divots in the piston head to protect these from, from going too far. And on the back side, it has this little guard so the valves can't blow off. off. If I took this off, I'd snap the valves. They're only 25 to 30 thousandths of an inch. They're real thin. If you overcharge your car, or you put too much oil in the refrigerant, you're going to bend or break these valves. If you break them, you have metal in an engine. It's going to blow up. If you bend them, you're going to have 90-90. Well, even if you break them, you have 90-90. What I mean by that is 90 on the low side, 90 on the high side. Broken valve plate. That's how you tell. So on your rear head of your compressor, the big fitting on the outside inside these bolt holes is your suction. It sucks down through the pistons inside and back out. Right here, these little ports, that's your discharge ports. And they come out through these holes and out here and back out the compressor. So it goes in and back out. Compressor is nothing more than a pump. It doesn't affect how cold the air is coming out of your vents. And it doesn't affect how hard the air blows out of your vents. It simply pumps the oil and refrigerant through the system. It's not going to really make a difference in how cold your AC gets inside that car unless you have a compressor that's too small of a system for the system, you're not gonna have a problem. A compressor's a pump. It's not gonna change the orientation of how that AC blows or how cold it blows. You have to understand that. And if it's locked up, it's locked up. There's no in-between. There isn't any in-between. I can't explain it enough. So now that we've violated the compressor and you understand it better than most people in the country, I want you to share our videos with others so we can educate everybody and they understand what's really going on inside of a compressor for a street rod. You guys have a great day. Thanks for watching.